Hi, today we're going to have a look at the 2018 Ordinary Level Cash Budget. As with all the cash budgets, we are given the assets and liabilities at the start of the year. Then we are told the sales and purchases for five months, January to May, and we're given some additional information here. And then we're asked to prepare a cash budget for five months, January to May 2018. We're asked to prepare a budget of balance sheet at the end of May and then outline two benefits for manning and preparing a cash budget. So to start off with, we're going to have to do our cash budget. So the first thing we're going to have to do in our cash budget are our receipts. Now, if we go back to the question, it tells us that all sales are on credit and are paid for one month after sale. So in January, we will receive December sales. So to get December sales, we go up here and we look at our debtors at the start of the year because they are the debtors at the first of the first, so they would be the December sales. That's what we will receive in January. And just remember, sales go with debtors and purchases go with creditors. So when we're looking for our sales, we're going to go to the debtors figure of 82,100. So in January, we will receive December's debtors of 82,100. Then in February, we will receive January's sales. So now we just go down here to our sales. Uh, in, in February, we would receive January sales of 44,200. In March, we would receive February sales of 89,400. In April, we would receive March's sales of 88,100. And in May, we would receive April's sales of 57,900. I'm just going to total these across to give me total receipts of 361700. And then I will just total them down also to give me total receipts. There were no other receipts, but I'm just going to total these down. Now, sometimes it may say sales are on credit and are paid for two months after sale. If that was the case, they would have to give you a breakdown of those two months. So up here in debtors, they would have to give you November and December, because in January, you would have received November's, and in February, you would receive December's, and then in, in March, you would be back here to January's. So if it says two months, it will give you the breakdown of the two months up here in debtors. So the next thing we have to do, the next part of the cash budget are our payments. So payments, the first thing we're going to do in payments are our purchases. So with purchases, again, we'll go back to the question. It says all purchases are on credit and are paid for one month after the month of purchase. So it's similar to sales, except 28,000 for cash in April. So in April, we would have um, got March, we would have paid for March's purchases along with 28,000 cash. But you pay for cash straight away, so that 28,000 would have been in April. So we look at it again here. First of all, we are going to have, in January, we are going to pay for December's purchases. And purchases go with creditors. So I go back up here and I see what my creditors were, 50,300. They must have been my December purchases and I'll pay for those in January, 50,300. In February, I'm going to pay for January's purchases, which were 48,100. In March, I'm going to pay for February's purchases, which are 48,200. In April, I'm going to pay for March's purchases, which are 42,300. Plus the cash purchases, because they were cash purchases in April of 28,000, so they have to be included here. So it's going to be the 42,300 from March plus the 28,000 cash purchases, which give me 70,300. And then in May, I'm going to pay for the April purchases, which were 34,700, but I have to take away the 28,000 cash because that was actually paid for in April. So 
in May it's going to be April's, which is 34,700 minus 28,000. Which leaves me at 6,700. And I've highlighted these two uh, months in yellow because they're the ones that change. So if there's cash purchases, you add it to the month they're in and then you take it away from the next month. And they're the, probably the figures that students find most difficult when doing this cash budget. So now I'm just going to total these across. The next thing we have to do is rent. So he rents the premises for 42,000 per annum, which means per year, payable monthly. Now, even though we're only doing a cash budget for five months, we still have to divide it by 12 because the cost is spread over a year. So the rent is going to be 42,000 divided by 12, which is 3,500, and that's going to be the same each month. And I'm going to total these to give me 17,500. Equipment. Equipment was bought Equipment was bought in March for 6,000 cash. So nothing will go in January, nothing will go in February. 6,000 will go in March, there'll be nothing in April and nothing in May. And that will total 6,000. The next thing we have to do are put in the wages. So in the question, it says the wages were 16,400 per month. So each month, I'm just gonna put in 16,400. I'm going to total that across to give me 82,000. That is all of the payments done. So now I just have to total each month's payments, just the payments. So I'm just adding these figures here. So in January was 70,200. In February, 68,000. In March, my payments were 74,100. In April, they were 90,200. In May, they added down to give me 26,600, and my total payments for the five months were 329,100. So now I have my total receipts and my total payments. So to get my net cash, I just have to take my total receipts here, 82,100, minus my total payments, which gives me 11,900. And I'm going to do that for February. I did the same thing for March. 89,400 minus 74,100. Same for April. And again for May. And I'm going to also do the same thing for the total column. So now I can see that the months that I had a negative cash position here were February and April. Now the next thing I need to do is to put in my opening cash. And the opening cash I will get from the question, because I can see from above here, the cash I started off with at the 1st of January is 31,200. So that 31,200 goes here in the first column, and it also always goes in the total column. Whatever it is in the first month, the same figure will go in the total, 31,200. That's why they're both highlighted in green. They should be the same figure. So now I just add these down, or if they're negative, I take them away, depending on the sign. So these are both pluses. I'm going to add these. So my net cash, so that I'm up 11,900 this month. I have 31,200 coming forward. So at the end of the month, I'm going to have 43,100 at the end of January. So my closing cash in January is going to be my opening cash in February. So in February, I'm down 23,800, but I have 43,000. 100 coming forward from the previous month, which leaves me with a closing cash of 19,300. My closing cash in February is going to be my opening cash in March. Added to my net cash above gives, gives me closing cash in March of 34,600. My closing cash in March will be my opening cash in April. So in April, I have a negative net cash of minus 2,100, but I have 34,600 coming forward from the previous month, which leaves me with closing cash of 32,500. Again, my closing cash in April is my opening cash in May. I add these down to give me 63,800. Now this here does not go here because there's already a figure there to start off with and it's a total column, it's not the next month. If that was June, you would put 63,800 here, but it's not. 
So now I just add these two figures down. And again, I got 63,800. And if these two figures are the same, their cash budget has balanced and you have a fair idea that you are probably right. The second thing we were asked to do in this question is prepare a budgeted balance sheet at the end of May. So to do the budgeted balance sheet, the first thing we're going to start off with are our fixed assets. So our fixed assets from the question at the start of the year, our fixed assets are 305,000. So you're kind of taking, your start. this is your starting point here, these assets and liabilities. So my fixed assets are 305,000, but I bought equipment for 6,000, which is a fixed asset. So at the end of May, it's going to be 3,500, which is that which it started off in January with, plus the 6,000 equipment, which gives me 311,000. Then I'm going to have to get my current assets. So my first current asset is going to be closing stock. And we are told in the question here, that the closing stock at the end of May is 29,100. So I'm just going to put in 29,100 here for closing stock. My debtors are going to be my May sales because my debtors at the end of May will be my May sales because we won't receive that money until June. So at the end of May, my debtors are going to be 81,600 because we won't receive this money until June. And remember, sales go with debtors. So the debtors are going to do the May sales of 81,600. And my cash is just my balancing figure for my cash budget. So my cash, I'm just going to go back up here and take the 63,800. That there is my cash figure. The cash figure I'll have at the end of May. So if I add these, it will give me total current assets of 174,500. Now I just have to take away my current liabilities. And the only <coughs> current liabilities I have are creditors. And creditors go with purchases. So my creditors will be my May purchases figure because I won't pay for them until June. So my May purchases are 34,500. So that will leave you with a working capital of current assets minus my current liabilities of 140,000. And that will be added to my fixed assets above to give me total net assets of 451,000. I may as well write in total net assets here. So my total net assets will be 451,000. Now just to finish off the balance sheet, my next heading is finance by. So the first thing that will go into the finance by is capital. And again, I will get that at the top of the question. So capital here, I can see is 400,000. And the next thing, the last figure I need to put in is my net profit. And again, I'll be given net profit down here in the notes. It tells me net profit of five months is expected to be 51,000. So net profit of 51,000 will go in here. And now again, I'm going to just add these two figures give me 451,000 and that is called our capital employed and again now we can see that our balance sheet is balanced because 451,000 for total net assets and 451,000 for capital employed shows that the balance sheet is balanced and again that would be a good indication that you've done the question correctly. Part C of the question asks us outline two benefits for manning and preparing a cash budget. So to look at that, benefits will be it shows his surplus deficit at the end of each month. So we can see that if we go back and look at the net cash position here, we can see what months we are up. The positive ones here, January, March, and May, we are up, and in February and April we are, have negative cash position. It will help Jack to decide when a bank overdraft needs to be arranged. So the months are in a negative cash position, they might get a bank overdraft so they'll have cash available. 
It will help Jack to decide how to invest the surplus. So if they have lots of extra cash at the end of a month, they may invest that money into an investment fund or somewhere. And the cash budget shows all the inflows and outflows for the period. So it shows all the money coming into the company and all the cash going out of the company over the five month period. I hope this video was of use and if you found it useful, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.